It's day three of C Otter Classic 2024, and I found possibly the most interesting new product, and I'm wearing it right now. Not the helmet, this bit here, called the high bar. A reinvention of how you wear a helmet to improve safety. Got a little dial here, that flips up, pops off, bobs your uncle. Now, let's speak to Greg and find out the full story behind high bar. So, I guess we should start with how this came about. What's the, uh, the thinking behind Hybar? Yeah, sure. We're a, a, a company that's uh, built up of, of some uh, very well-known in inventors in, in the bicycle helmet or industry, uh, and then combined with some people that have really deep helmet knowledge. Okay. And we've come together to address what we think is the part of the helmet that just hasn't been um, uh, focused on really for 100 years. If, if you look at uh, modern cycling helmets and compare it to uh, you know, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, everything from the ears up uh, has, has pretty, pretty dramatically changed yeah. and improved. Yeah, got um, but, but lighter, the, yeah, more aero, ventilated. Exactly, all, all those things. We've yeah. done remarkable things with, with relatively simple materials, but the straps are essentially the same. Yeah, they haven't changed much. They got a bit lighter, perhaps, and a little bit lighter. You get some magnetic buckles. Yeah. There's, there's some. Um, yeah, there, it hasn't been completely untouched, but fundamentally, how it works hasn't changed very much. And and we all know it isn't the most intuitive system uh, to use. You have to adjust sometimes a front strap and a rear strap, and you have something under your ears, and you have uh, O-rings and ladder lock buckle, and maybe you have to, you know, take out your scissors and uh, pick lighter at the end of the process and cut off the straps and melt them. Like, it just felt to us like this is something that um, needs to be addressed. It can really benefit from the power of design. Um, and, and I'll say also that for as advanced as helmets are, there's still quite a fair number of traumatic brain injuries related to cycling accidents. Uh, in the US in a typical year, it's more than 100,000 uh, people show up in emergency rooms with traumatic brain injuries relative or related to cycling. And helmet ejection and helmet Stability is is a role in a lot of those. As a helmet moving around when they have a, a yeah, we're not positioned in the right okay, place yeah. uh, to, to start with, and we all see this whether it's on the bike path yeah. or the Saturday the group ride. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of um, maladjusted helmets yeah. out in the real world. So our system is is really designed to, to make that simple and and easy. So with the high bar system, all of the webbing and buckles, it all goes away. And now we just have uh, a simple system that you put on your head as normal, uh, pivot the arms down, and now all of the adjustment is taken up by, by one, one dial. Okay. Uh, you tighten and loosen the helmet until it's uh, snug but not, not tight, and, and you're good to go. It's, it's very, very difficult to, to, to not wear the helmet correctly. So we think that's, that's a big advantage to all riders, um, enthusiast riders, um, but also children, uh, recreational and fitness riders. We think everyone can really benefit from this technology. This anchored into the helmet, is that kind of reinforced at that point? There's just yeah. two points there, isn't it? At one point. Exactly on right, side. exactly right. So, in fact, if, if you could have an x-ray of, of the helmet, you'd see there's, there's quite a bit of um, structure inside the okay. foam of the helmet. And in this case, we, we mold an anchor inside the helmet that the high bar system snaps into. So it's a very uh, secure, robust system, but also quite quite easy to to assemble. Okay. And uh, webbing straps are fairly light, or lightweight these days. Is this heavier than a conventional system, or is the weight about the same? It depends what you're comparing it to. Okay. I would say that the downside of, of the magnetic buckles is is they're a little bit heavy. Okay. And our system will be in many cases um, lighter than those. If it's compared to a very lightweight webbing system, it could be 10 to 15 grams heavier. Okay. But I think we're we're in the we're in the mix there in terms of in terms of weight. Okay, I should probably uh, try it on, shouldn't I? So it's a size medium. So it looks quite different because that's at the front, isn't it? I mean, it looks a bit. Yeah, or back people to front, are used it? to the dial being on the back. Right. Uh, the good news helmet is it's, it's really impossible to wear the helmet backwards. So back to front, place it on. Yep. Pivot the arms down, and now tighten the dial. That way. And what we think is is right is it should be snug, but you should be able to, to fit comfortably a finger in between uh, your chin and and the bottom of, of the high bar dial, and you're yeah, good feels, you're good to go. Feels stable. You don't really 
You can't feel anything on the sides of the exactly. cheeks at all. Exactly. That, that's the first feedback we hear from all the test riders is uh, the helmet floats on my head. Yeah. It, it, it disappears. Um, in addition to all the, the benefits that, that we see with, with retention and fit of the helmet, there are some other advantages um, in, in no particular order. Uh, it's quite a bit quieter uh, than a typical helmet strap oh, wind, to wear. Wind noise along wind the Wind noise side, yeah. um, really is reduced. And um, related to that is it is more aerodynamic because your webbing straps aren't uh, moving around in the okay. wind, particularly at, at race speeds. Uh, there is an aerodynamic advantage to, to this system. Uh, it's also cooler because you don't have the webbing straps sitting against your, okay, yeah. your skin. You can take advantage of convective cooling, and, and the air could flow over your, your face and your skin and strip away that, that hot air. So, uh, again, fit and retention is, is really the, the big idea for us. Okay. But it's, it's quite nice that, that we can also say that the system is, is cooler, quieter, and faster. Okay. Well, it, it certainly works. Um, it, I mean, it looks a bit odd, I'll be honest, but it does. It's it, odd does. And it feels just like a normal helmet, and there's, there's no irritation. Because sometimes straps can can irritate the skin and if not adjusted properly or even the eye adjusted properly it can flap around can't they and this seems to solve that issue I guess riding is a real sort of uh, proof of the pudding so hopefully yeah that's that's really the, the test and and for sure it, it looks different as as most new ideas do when they're yeah. new my belief and my experience is that if the system works well um, traditions change okay. things change yeah. <laughs> suspension forks used to look very strange. True, yeah, yeah true, yeah. yeah most um, new products look a bit odd at first and then we get used to them. That's right. I was part of launching the rear fit systems on, on helmets and, and there was okay. a time when people thought that looked strange and they weren't sure they wanted hard plastic on the back of their head yeah. and now you wouldn't buy a helmet without that, okay. that technology. So um, we're quite excited to be working with helmet partners uh, to integrate our technology into, into their helmets and They'll each do it, I think, in, in some different ways. Okay. So this is what we call High Bar One. It's the first version of, of the system okay. uh, with, with the first partner, but it's going to take on uh, different forms, I think, for okay. different kinds of riders. It'll look different on a children's helmet okay. than it will on a trail helmet or okay. a snowboard helmet or, or in this case, uh, a high-performance road gravel helmet. Okay. So what's the plan in terms of availability? This is on a helmet that hasn't been released yet. So that's true. When That's can we true. see it in the market? <laughs> when can we see it in the market? Uh, I can't say? say for sure. That's, okay. that's in this case up to the helmet partner. Okay. Um, but if you look around the internet and, and watch what's happening in, in, uh, in racing, particularly okay. on the Mountain Bike World okay. Cup, you'll see that this helmet's already being used okay. uh, in competition at the highest level. And you've chosen not to manufacture your own helmet, but to partner with helmet brands. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the idea there is is to develop um, a, a tool, basically, that any brand can use to make their helmet better. Uh, and we think that's that's the best way to get the technology out in the marketplace and and to benefit the most riders okay. is, is to work with more than one more than one partner and in fact in more than one helmet category. Okay. Just a question on uh, durability. This is a, a pivot or a bushing or just a I'm thinking of riding in the UK when it's raining, you're riding off road, getting mud in there. Is that still going to be smooth? A thousand kilometers in and yeah, we're, covered in mud? We're, um, we do a lot of durability testing. Okay. In fact, we've been developing the system for four years four already. Years. Wow, okay. So uh, those are the kinds of things you, you can learn the hard way. Uh, fortunately, our team is very experienced and we're, we're doing a lot of cycle testing of the materials and, and the, the mechanisms and we're very confident that durability uh, isn't going to be a problem. Okay. It's, it's quite a simple system. Uh, simple usually lasts, and that's our goal here. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, sharing insight into My the high bar. So there we go. The high bar coming to a helmet near you soon, probably. So uh, let us know what you think by leaving a comment down below. But yeah, thanks for your time. My pleasure. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.